General Dallaire Francisco Xavier Garcia Arnez became Spain's 20th Air Force Chief of Staff in July 2012, and in January of this year was appointed Director of the European Air Group. He is responsible for the organisation, training and equipping of 24,000 active duty and civilian personnel and is a member of Spain's National Defence Council. General Arnaz has gained extensive aviation experience, having accumulated around 4,000 fast jet flying hours, primarily on the F-4 and F-18. In addition to his command and flying duties, he has also held several staff office positions in Air Combat Command, the Chief of Staff Office and the Air Force Staff. General Arnez's international assignments have included operational roles in the Balkans and Commander of ISAF Forward Support Base Herat in Afghanistan. He has also served as the Deputy Spanish Military Representative to the NATO and EU military committees in Brussels. I now welcome General Arnez to the stage to present his views of the European experience of multi-domain integration. Distinguished audience, generals, dear peers, thank you very much for inviting me and offering the opportunity to explain some of the views we can have on the multi-domain uh, integration. Uh, for me, it's a privilege to be over here with two hats. One, it is, as it has been mentioned, as a chief of staff of the Spanish Air Force, and as well, present director of the European Air Group, which is a group of European Air Forces that we have associated and established a headquarters in, in the United Kingdom at, at uh, High Wycombe with a small staff, just 20 persons, that they will try and they strive to coordinate our efforts and our staffs to better uh, integrate and to obtain a real interoperability, not only in what it is material, but in the doctrine, mindness, and be able to operate and work together. These countries are Belgium, Germany, France, Italy, the Netherlands, and Spain. And I think that in the years they've been working, they've been very successful. Uh, obtaining uh, very good results. Well, during the World Economic Forum in Davos, social, political, and business world leaders discussed the impact of the fourth industrial revolution in the international system, meaning how technological evolution might affect relationship between countries and consequently Western security and defense systems. Artificial intelligence, automatization, hyper-connectivity, robotics, this progress could lead to a more unstable world and transform the environment in which the military effort takes place into an always more complex strategic setting, more dangerous and unpredictable, with increasingly interconnected threats of different magnitude and of a miscellaneous nature. In terms of security, and according to the current strategic environment, full war between countries is still unlikely, but rather more frequent and sore crises will take place. Small local conflicts with global consequences, shifting from wars of attrition to quick campaigns. Our security framework must adapt to correctly read the evolution and nature 
of the un aforementioned environment to modify it according to our goals and interests. Because if we don't do it, the potential threats will. To interpret the environment's nature, where the conflict takes place, implies to define the domains in which the military force may act and permanently evaluate whether our security system matches the risks, the threats, and the general environment. Thereby, in the following minutes, I will try to reflect over the multi-domain concept, offering for discussion my point of view. First, defining the domains involved in the future conflict, I will continue by describing the contribution of the airspace power to gain and maintain engagement superiority, and finally, conclude with the greatest greatest competitive advantage of the Air Force's inventories, which is its personnel. Domain could be described as the environment where military actions are executed, conditioned, limited, or maximized to achieve specific effects and objectives. In the past, we used to consider air, land, and sea environments as domains. Down the line, the space domain was added. And recently, the cyber domain has been included. Therefore, according to the nature of the current conflict, we can distinguish between the physical domain, which is comprised by the air, space, land, and sea, and the, and the virtual domain, consistent, consisting of the cyber environment. However, the success or failure of any military operation within the physical domain will depend greatly on the tempo and the perception. This is to say, when a decision is made, when a particular action is enforced, when the action produces the desired effects and the perception of it. In brief, how the action is interpreted and the effects achieved. Therefore, it seems appropriate due to their relevance to the military operations to consider another two domains. The temporal domain determined by the on and enemy decision cycles and the psychological domain determined by on and external ideas, on and external knowledge management and what we could, could call the battle of the narratives. Any modern conflict could be defined by these four axes or dimensions, whether by disputes between groups or organizations in any of the four domains or in one of them exclusively, or even in any combination of them. We could say that the essence of conflict occurs when every domain remains quiet, meaning when no agent pursue to take control of it. A clear example of uh, the interpretation of a conflict through the domain, conflict through the domains, is uh, what we could call, uh, what it is called, the hybrid warfare. The NATO document comprehensive report on hybrid warfare defines it as a comprehensive, comprehensive strategy to achieve geopolitical, strategic, and strategic objectives based on broad, complex, adaptive, and often highly integrated combination of conventional and unconventional means, overt and covert activities, military, paramilitary, irregular, irregular and civilian actors conducted 
across the full spectrum of the elements of power to create ambiguity and targeted at the an adversary's vulnerabilities. Complicated. But anyway, we have to deal with it. But from the multi-domain points of view, hybrid warfare could be understood as a combination of coordinated and synchronized actions across the four dimensions defined, normally oriented to break the enemy's decision cycle by means of deceit and deception. The current conflict flies within the four dimensions, and there are threats which are able to fly faster than we do. They are more agile and efficient in their actions. The success of our military operations will depend on the integration of proper actions in each of the domains using military, diplomatic, information, and economic means. According to the definitions previously addressed, the physical domain encompasses the traditional operational environments, land, sea, and airspace. Our aircraft and satellites operate in the airspace domain. They fly out of the air bases and can attack targets in the air, on the ground, or at sea. This is the domain we all master because it is our native domain, the one in which we have operated so far. Traditionally, armed forces and air forces too have focused on the physical domain, aircraft, weapons, bases. But very recently, we have identified cyber as one of the priorities. But the other two domains, I both mentioned it, the temporal and the mental, are still at a different level. In spite of all of the above, the fact that operations in other domains gain in importance in the overall outcome of a conflict or crisis, it does not imply that the physical domain is going to disappear as battle space. It will continue to be one of the most important combat arenas because even seven warriors live in the physical domain and they are vulnerable to physical effects. The challenge is to be able to integrate the rest of the domains, especially the temporal and the mental domains in future air operations. The uh, document called Joint Air Power Capabilities, which has been drafted by the Strategic Allied Command Transformation, provide an strategic vision of the roles of the air power and identifies the capabilities required for 2030 and beyond. This document is not a multi-domain uh, document but in an, in an effort to provide a strategic insight in the capabilities required in the long term, it clearly marks the need for 2030 Air Forces to operate in all domains. It clearly marks that the air power roles are going to be more or less the same in this time. And it'll be the counter air, whatever you want to call it, attack, air mobility, and ISR. Those roles are present across the full spectrum of the air operations in the envisaged operations framework. The strategic guidance provided for the capabilities required can be summarized in prepare, project, engage, sustain, command and control, protect, and inform. Those conclusions regarding the future capabilities of joint air power will inform the next generation's 
generation of weapons, armaments, and material. And in this field, technology takes a very important role. The pace of technological advance is clearly much faster than the Air Force's capabilities and material acquisition processes. So trying to describe how aircrafts, weapons, command and control systems, the elements of the physical domain will look like in the future is a mere imagination exercise. But there are some technological strands that will significantly impact the way we will fight in the future. I would like to highlight a couple of these possible strands. Cuts technological proliferation, severely produces a techno technological advantage. Connected to the above, proliferation increases the risks in the form of over-reliance, containing single points of failure, and the lack of traditional backup systems. So far, even in the most modern and state-of-the-art systems, there is a human element in the decision loop. More precisely, making the decision. But we are close to witness the tremendous leap forward or seeing interconnected machines or robots making their own decisions. Will we see a swarm or a cameo of armed RPAs taking up, assembling in the holdings and pushing toward the targets? But what is really new to the new generation Air Forces is the need to operate in the physical domain as well as in the rest of the domains. The need to cause effects in the temporal or virtual domains operating from the physical or space domain. And the need to defend from threats originated in the other domains. It is difficult to predict how Air Forces will be shaped by technology in this integration. But I would like to bring here examples that may or might disturb some thinking. Will we see cyber counter -air operations? Just as today the cyber component can be deemed to be in support of the Air Forces, it might also be seen that Air Forces may be in support of the cyber component for instance, by destruction of the data centers. It is th therefore important to understand at air level how to integrate, integrate cyber in air planning and targeting. Moreover, the involvement of air forces in the cyberspace arena is reinforced by the fact that the future vision of air power will probably be a combination of air power and cyber power. Air cyber. Dealing with this topic is one of the newest initiatives of the European Air Group that I mentioned before. Will we see cross-domain targeting, meaning preparing targets in different domains and searching effects in one or more domains? As a consequence of domain integration, Multi-domain situational awareness is a must. Regarding ISR capabilities, Air Forces will collect, process, disseminate information, and generate intelligence in all domains. Will we see, as suggested by the European Air Group, a cyber-recognized picture, or a STRATCOM-recognized picture? added to the current recognized air picture. In the future, our battle, a three-day ATO cycle will likely be too long. Nowadays, there are already, already indicators of this trend, such as dynamic targeting 
of time-sensitive targeting. Will we see a single standing real-time our task in order? According to the cyber domain and its contribution to a joint military action, an infrastructure adapted to offensive combat is necessary. The hyper-connectivity of air weapon systems with other components increases the efficiency of the cyber offensive actions. Similar to denial of enemy attacks or air superiority operations, counter-air can be designed in a way to inhibit virtual space computing structures which unbalance the scenario. Likewise, we can work in the virtual domain. This enables us with low cost connections, for instance, uh, encrypted internet connection, a future where a synergy of hundreds of operators, thousands even of operators, can contribute to exercise control over the air and space power. The use of a multi-connected connected network will shorten the dead times in the decision cycle. In the global network framework of our military operations, the involvement of the cyber world in the military air operations will lengthen the reach of any air headquarters to the farthest aircraft. The air and space, air and space power can be projected without, without physical or logistical limits that hamper the most important characteristic of the air power, which is its expeditionary nature. The unstoppable growth of the virtual world will be, would be exploited in the benefit of the air and space power. A dilemma is created when it is necessary to resolve the actor's identity in the domain. So we should translate this into the physical world and define the recognized cyber picture acknowledging the difficulty of integration within the COP. Cyberspace is a part of the global commons. That is, common spaces without an owner or a ruler, difficult to control without a leader who put the security and defense structures. As for a defensive use, how can we fight the cyber threats? And what is the contribution of the other integrated capabilities included, including air power, to counter it? Cyber defense is much more complex than a cyber attack. With a dual use technology where the offensive one dominates for better efficiency in the use of capabilities and its effects. The use of the cloud concept improves interoperability between fourth and fifth aircraft generations and the transition between productions of air weapon systems. The problem results in effective management of the databases. It is necessary to incorporate cyber objectives in the targeting process and planning, not only to coordinate, but go beyond and seeking correlation effects. The future vision of air power as a combination of the other domains to identify center of gravity, CIE's media, servers, nodes, and lines. When Discussing the physical and virtual domains, we often concentrate on platforms, material, and equipment to put aside two critical items, organization and personnel. Armed forces will have once more 
to react and adapt quickly to design and generate the structures and organizations that allow full multi-domain operations, both at planning and execution level. Besides, it has always been in mankind and military history, the human factor that will be crucial for the success of this that we could call the second revolution in military affairs. Education, training, and leadership will have to evolve to guarantee that our personnel have the necessary knowledge and skills to understand the implications of the multi-domain battle space. And this is particular, particularly true for the next generation of military leaders. Thus, in this multi-domain environment, what security model do we need? What strategy is more fit to the changes taking place around us? The common element to all domains is one, the individual. The combatant at all level who uses, exploits, or transgresses each domain. His mindset, his will to action, and his level of ambition. In my opinion, we must evolve towards more proactive models, which in modern societies, there are known as innovative models, with a wish for commitment, with, with a good will to influence the world to protect and preserve our values more inclusive and from a joint perspective through a highly ready prepared force. And the element that actually confers a proactive nature to strategic plans is the person responsible for designing and executing them. Ultimately, formulated plans are not as critical as the leadership model we decide to have and the talent of the people we want to attract and retain. Our true competitive advantage against any threat will be to have leaders at all levels of our organizations. And for that, we have to select them train him, educate him, and manage his careers. Most experts agree that the factor that really characterizes a leader is not so much his philosophy or leadership, his personality or management style. It is what it could be called the logic of actions. That is, how to interpret reality and the environment around him. And the leadership logic that the armed forces of tomorrow will need is the strategic logic. Leaders with the ability to create visions shared by the whole organization that help promote personal and organizational transformations. Leaders who can anticipate incoming threats together with the most likely combat scenario, enhancing knowledge management and information. Leaders who can question what is known about the environment, encouraging all staff to invest time and energy into a permanent learning. Leaders capable of interpreting reality around them to recognize common patterns in the complex problems or every day. Leaders who are able to decide from themselves to make decisions from a proactive and responsible attitude, seeking opportunity and taking the consequences. Leaders who can align themselves with the objectives of the other actors involved in the state's security improving strategic communication 
and relations both inside and outside the military environment. You know, leaders capable of learning, future-oriented, enabling collective learning and incorporating the talent and the commitment of every soldier, of every airman. So, concluding, to be well prepared to employ the air power in an ever more complex strategic environment, it is essential to feed, exploit, and share a cyber database that should be applied to the other domains. An effective management of these databases and the use of the cloud concept will improve interoperability between aircraft of the fourth and the fifth generation. And this will be crucial, a crucial tool to provide a powerful cross-domain based air force. The temporal domain may decide the success or failure of any military operation. Whether any event occurred alters beyond an enemy decision cycles. The hybrid warfare is well aware that a change produced in the battle rhythm or in the perception has strong influence within the physical or virtual domain. And the core of the four domains is the human factor. Even in the most modern and state-of-the-art systems, there is a human element in each decision loop. We need to identify and focus on these airmen that must understand the implications of the multi-domain battle space. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. Bye.